So this is a video I've been planning to do for a while and it's just in relation to uh, aircraft emergencies and uh, where the aircraft divert to because there are still videos popping up on YouTube uh, by flat earthers who are claiming that these are evidence of a flat earth. Now it's nothing of the sort because if you plot these flight plans correctly on a globe you will see that they make perfect sense and I'll get into that a bit later in this video but what I just want to talk about is just the way that uh, airlines and corporate aircraft uh, generally plan for emergency situations because nothing is left to chance and certainly when you're doing a long-range trip across the ocean you will have predetermined um, diversion airfields and we use a system called equal time points to understand uh, what is the most suitable option to divert to in the case of an emergency and I'll uh, expand on that shortly. But um, just to have a look at the type of aircraft that I fly, it's like that. It's a Global Express. It's a long-range corporate business jet. And it's capable of flying from anywhere in the world to anywhere else in the world with no more than one refueling stop. So we can go from Sydney to London with a refueling stop in the Maldives. And uh, we can go likewise from Sydney to New York with a refueling stop in Hawaii. So basically, long-range corporate jet. Now... When we plan our trips over the ocean, we obviously have enough fuel for the flight, but we also have to factor in uh, what to do in the event of an emergency. Now, there are several types of emergencies we can uh, encounter. And uh, just to look at them briefly, one might be a medical situation where uh, either a crew member or a passenger requires urgent medical treatment, more than we are capable of providing on board the aircraft. So we may need to land at the nearest suitable airport. Now, if you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you need to know what the nearest suitable airport is going to be. Another scenario, which is more critical to the safety of the aircraft, is uh, the loss of one engine. You know, these uh, aircraft are perfectly capable of flying on one engine. However, they will fly slower and they will fly lower. So we need to factor in the, uh, the fuel efficiency if they do lose one engine. The more critical scenario is if we have a depressurization event and that's where we lose cabin pressure and we need to descend to say 14,000 feet so that the pilots can stay on oxygen and the passengers will be fine even if they don't have oxygen. The problem with uh, depressurization is we're now flying very inefficiently at low altitude. The, uh, the engines are just burning through the fuel and the um, true airspeed is a lot slower. So overall efficiency is far less, but uh, we need to factor in um, enough fuel to cater for a depressurization event. So let's have a look at uh, how we calculate these equal time points. So I've just uh, created a very simple route between airport A and airport B, being a distance of 1000 nautical miles. If we depart airport A and we're flying to airport B and we encounter an emergency that requires us to land as soon as possible, where we land will be determined by how far we have progressed along this route. Now, obviously, if we've just departed and we're about here, it's going to be faster to turn around and go back to the departure airport. If we've gone more than halfway and we encounter an emergency, it's going to be faster to continue to airport B. So that's the basic idea behind these equi time points. Okay, now in a nil wind situation, if uh, we have a, a leg of 1000 miles, the halfway point is going to be 500 miles down the track. So anywhere before 500 miles, if we have an emergency, we will generally go back to the departure airport. If we're past the halfway point, we will continue to the destination. So that's fairly straightforward. Now, You'll see the way I've drawn that little ETP on the uh, route. That's basically how we have them done on our flight plans, and I'll, I'll get to that uh, shortly. But uh, let's have a look at a, another scenario where we have a longer distance and we have another airport as a possible option. Okay, so we've now got airport A as the departure point, airport B as the destination, and en route, we've got another airport down here at sea, okay? We're not intending to go there, but it is a possible diversion airport in the event of an emergency, okay? So now we can calculate two equal time points, okay? We can calculate um, in the early part of the flight, which airport is going to be the fastest to fly to, 
and in the middle of the flight and in the later part of the flight which airport is going to give us the fastest landing. So let's just have a look at how that works. Assuming this is uh, 2000 nautical miles and we've got our airport C down here which is just past the halfway mark. Now it's not exactly drawn to scale but these are just uh, demonstrative figures just to give you an idea roughly. So, so basically if we're at point A and we depart Prior to reaching equi time point one, if we have an emergency, we're going back to airport A. After we pass ETP one, and before we reach ETP two, the fastest airport to reach is down here at airport C. So for essentially the majority of the flight, during this part of the flight, if we have an emergency, we're going to choose Airport C as our diversion airport. Once we cross ETP2, we're faster going to Airport B, which is the ultimate destination, okay? Now that's just showing a bit more realistically how we plan them in flight, and it can get even more advanced than that. Looking at um, another typical leg. Just move that out of the way. So we've now got multiple equi time points on this plan. So the original departure point is airport A and we want to go to airport B. But as we're flying along, prior to reaching ETP1, we would go back to A. Between ETP1 and ETP2, we're going to go to airport C. After ETP2 to ETP3, we're going to airport D. And after ETP3, we're going to the final destination. So you can see we know by pre-calculating these equal time points exactly where the fastest diversion airfield will be anywhere en route. So let me just show you what that looks like in an actual flight plan. And these are, these are flight plans that I have actually done myself over the last few years. So here's an example of uh, what the ETPs will look like on our flight plan. And this is just a simple one from Sydney down to Christchurch. This was uh, what we flew on the way across to Rio for the Olympics last uh, August. And there's the ETP and you can see it shows the distance and the heading to continue to Christchurch or to return back to Sydney. Now on that same trip, this was the next sector and you can see we went from Christchurch to San Diego, and you can see there's multiple ETPs en route. Now, during the initial part, obviously it's quicker to go back to New Zealand. During the latter part, it's quicker to continue to San Diego. And during this middle sector, it was actually faster in the event of an emergency to go to airport SCIP, which is uh, Mataveri International Airport. It's one of the most remote airports in the world. And uh, really it was our only option on that southern route. Now here's another one. This was actually probably the, the most memorable flight that I've ever had, um, to be honest. It was from Italy to Eagle, Colorado in the USA. And uh, we were going west and we went up quite high on our latitude. Now it looks curved on this map, but on a, a globe, it's a relatively straight line. And what I, what I liked about this was the whole flight was in daylight and uh, it was quite clear. So as we came across the Alps, you saw those clearly. We saw London, we went across the top, we saw Iceland, we saw Greenland, and then came down through the top of um, Canada. There was just so much snow and ice virtually the whole way. But you can see here, we just have multiple ETPs along the route. So depending upon how far we had progressed, this would determine which airport we would divert to in the event of an emergency. Now on the flight plan itself, each ETP will be detailed like this. Now this is on the New Zealand, sorry, Sydney to New Zealand sector. And uh, this is the depressurized divert summary. And then we have the one engine inoperative summary. And it basically just gives you the location of the ETP. It can vary because the speed and the altitude will be different under those uh, different scenarios. And it also determines how much fuel you will have on board when you land. So let's now take a look at some of the actual um, airliner emergency diversions and see how they actually do work perfectly when you plot them correctly on a globe. So the first one we'll look at, and it's on a channel called World History Official, Flat Earth, Pilot Explanation and Emergency Landing Always Prove 
flat earth. Well, that's not the case at all. And I'm not singling out this channel by any means. I'm just using it as an example because there are many channels that are showing this uh, kind of disinformation. The first thing is uh, the route is from Chicago to Doha. You'll see this blue line, the way it's drawn on this map. It's going just north of Africa and it's just passing through Portugal, just near Spain. Now that's not quite correct. When you look at it like that, it doesn't make a lot of sense why they diverted to Moscow. But when you look at it on the globe, the Great Circle route actually goes a lot further north than Africa. There's Portugal and Spain down here. The Great Circle route, this magenta line, is a direct straight line on the globe. And as you can see, Moscow is not that far off course. So it makes sense. Obviously, they had other diversion airfields along the way, and, and certainly that Great Circle route might have had uh, some adjustments for local wind and, and ATC requirements, but um, you can see that it's a lot further north than uh, it was indicated on that previous video. Okay, so diverting to Moscow is just not unrealistic at all. It makes perfect sense on the globe. Now, the next one was a flight from Hong Kong to Los Angeles, where uh, Cathay Pacific, they actually diverted to an airfield called Shemya Airfield. Now, the way it's drawn here, again, is just very unrealistic because the airport they diverted to was not up here in the middle of Alaska. It was down here on the Aleutian Islands. And again, this blue line in the video is unrealistic. It's not showing the correct flight path as it would occur on a globe. If we look at it on a globe, that's what it looks like, okay? From Hong Kong to Los Angeles. And the airfield that they diverted to, Shemya, on the western end of the Aleutian Islands, is virtually on course. You can see it makes perfect sense why they diverted to that airfield, okay? On the Flat Earth video, it's deceptive because it's showing the initial route incorrectly and it's showing the point they diverted to in Alaska incorrectly. It's down here on the Aleutian Islands. And as we saw on the Great Circle route, Shemya Airport is basically directly on course. And this is another one, which is uh, one I've seen many times. It's a flight that actually originated in Bali, but uh, this Flat Earth video is showing it quite deceptively as going from Bali. It didn't do that at all. It first went from Bali to Taiwan, and then it flew from Taiwan flight plan to Los Angeles and diverted to Anchorage, Alaska, because there was a, a baby born on the aeroplane. Now, as you can see, the way they've drawn this, it doesn't look like it makes much sense at all, okay? If it was going from Bali, which it wasn't, it was going from Taiwan on the actual sector, straight to Los Angeles, it looks like the diversion to Anchorage, Alaska is a long way out of the way, and it certainly doesn't make sense. But once again, let's look at it on the globe, which is uh, how we should be analyzing this. There's the flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles, and there's Anchorage, Alaska. You can see it's not that far off course. Now, they probably could have diverted again to Shemya Airport much faster, but Sometimes it's not always the most advantageous to go to the nearest suitable airfield because with a new baby on board, Shemya Airport is a military base. They probably didn't have ideal facilities for the uh, for looking after the infant. So in that case, the, uh, the crew would have made the decision just to go the extra distance to Anchorage, which is a major city and has uh, better medical facilities. But as you can see, anywhere along this Great Circle route, it's certainly faster to divert up to Anchorage than it would have been to continue to Los Angeles. So you can see these emergency diversions that you'll see crop up from time to time on Flat Earth videos, if you actually look at them correctly on the globe, they all make perfect sense.